Hello everybody, Flick here, it's time for yet another Let's Look At, and today we are looking at Ether 1 or Ether 1, depending on the way you want to say it. I think I'm more prone to saying Ether. Um, by the way, excuse the little graphical glitch going on on the menu, it's because I've just started recording and for some reason it seems to happen. Anyway, this is a game by White Paper Games, and the reason I went into options, despite the fact I never usually do, is to show you that this is the first game I'm covering which has Oculus Rift support, at least that I know of from memory. And I want you to keep that in mind through what we're going to see here, that it is Oculus Rift supported. And we are going to jump into a new game while I kind of set the scene, although a miniature intro will also do that. So I have played, I played the game for 1 hour 27 minutes, as you can see there. We're going to start a new game. Do you want to use this, uh, you should want to use this slot, both manual and auto save data will be overwritten. Hang on a minute, I picked slot number 2, right? Yeah, okay, good. Good, right. So we should get a little bit of voice acting here. It's me. Listen, I, I'm sorry for the things I said earlier on. It's just... God, I really don't think you should go to that place. I, I, don't, I don't think they care. Not like they should. And before you think it, I know how it feels to want to feel safe, to want more. You know I do it, but... but Jesus, do, do you know how they view you? Just another patient to squeeze money out of. Please... Don't go tonight. I'm freaking scared. Okay, so that was the setup. And we'll just carry on. You have a very natural movement. You can turn off the bob if it annoys you. But I really do like... By the way, I have full subtitles turned on because I am going to accidentally speak over things sometimes. You can turn off the bobbing if you want. So this is the main thing this game is about. This thing here. And as it tells us, we can press and hold left mouse to identify ethereal rock. We teach, they restore, you remember. So the rather mildly disturbing theme here is that the game deals with dementia and a semi-sci-fi kind of futuristic material here, the Aetherite, that can help people go inside the memories of those suffering from dementia and actually help stop the degradation of their, their minds, their memories, etc by helping to restore them. And we play as someone whose job is the restorer. Well, I think you're not the restorer because there's more than one, but still. Is that? It is. Oh, this is excellent. We're so glad to have you back. My name is Dr. Edmonds, but you can call me Phyllis if you like. Right. There should be a register on the reception desk. So once you've signed in, Grab the key card from the top drawer and head on down. You will need it to gain access to the lower floors. So there we go, I have signed in. And this is basically, this is a tutorial by the way, in case it isn't apparent that it's telling me all the instructions, etc. procedure for patient. J M two zero five seven. Will commence shortly. Staff are advised to prepare chambers for initial projection. Well, it seems you best get a move on. There's plenty to do, and for you, plenty to see and discover. I'm going to be guiding you through the process of restoration this evening, and hopefully ensuring that nothing terrible happens to you, or our client. I'm in restoration chamber number three. Now, if you don't mind, would you be a dear and head on down? So there is a lot of exploring you can actually do before you carry on with this, but there is a stopping point I want to get to, and I don't want it to go on too long. So I'm going to push on and leave some of the other exploration you can do here before getting started up to you. And I think we will hear a lot from Phyllis until we're actually inside the, the kind of tutorial setup of our first interactions as a restorer. Uh, let's see, where are we going? We can actually run, I keep forgetting. Is this where we want? Is this chamber number three? Oh, there we are. This is where we want. So you never actually see anyone else, at least so far, with my time with the game. You just kind of hear Phyllis talking to you over Beautiful speakers like so. A miracle of the 20th century. A window into the minds of others and a tool to cure disease and illness. But it would be nothing without the likes of you. So we're going to do a bit of puzzle solving here, but I already know the solution, so I'm kind of hurrying it along. Would you be a dear and help me with the setup? Yes, this being the setup. 
routing. You can access it from that terminal over there. This one? Oh, that one. And there's two very distinct... Oh, I was supposed to place the card here, but I already put it back there, so whatever. Oh, for God's sake. Why can't anything work around here? Okay. We need to replace the fuse. You'll need to take the blown one out and replace it with the correct fuse. Yes, yes, Phyllis, I've already done that. Thank you. So as I was about to say, there's two distinct styles of play in the game where there's optional puzzles and then the game itself is more so for exploration and enjoyment of an interesting story and an interesting sci-fi-esque concept. That should do it. Now, I'm going to have to talk right. over her a little bit because otherwise I'm never going to finish a thought here. Nice uh, but I will go more into it. The tutorial well, you memory you get put into is linear in the sense that you have to do both the exploration part and the puzzle elements of it. But after that, you then get the choice. And we'll see more of that. Now, I believe I am just to get in the chair now, am I? I wasn't listening to her, unfortunately. <laughs> Damn it! What was I supposed to be doing? Oh! Uh, nope, nope, let me in. There we go. I was pressing E instead of left click. My bad. It's very, almost Matrix like, I suppose. This right. thing here, or something out of Bioshock, that's what was at the back of my head. Yes, yeah, so we're going to help Jean. She's suffering from dementia. Our idea is to go inside her mind, find the cause of the dementia, and remove it. Yeah, I don't know why they call it plaque buildup. That's a little weird. So this is the machine starting to fill up. Or, hmm. Well, blocker of view anyway. I assume it works with kind of like holographic projection or something. I'm not entirely sure on that. It's never really too specific. It's taking an awful long time to bring down these parts. So if you aren't interested in a somewhat slow-moving-ish story-driven game with puzzle aspects, I mean, there's no there's no shooting. There's no there's a bit of kind of fast-paced action, kind of. But I think you need to be into a very specific kind of game to get a lot of fun out of Ether 1. Now I have been enjoying it a lot because I'm into that kind of thing. I like a narrative driven game. And I have been doing a few of the the optional puzzles as well. And it gives you more backstory as a reward for doing so. And you're helping Jean at the same time. And it's a very interesting concept that I... No, oh, this is the thing I filling up with. Yeah. It's filling up with liquid. I wondered what the noise was, that's why I stopped uh, mid-sentence there. As I was saying, yeah, the, it's an interesting topic for a game, I find. This idea that memories are in dementia patients or some kind of plaque build-up to do with this etherite crystal and that someone can go inside the memories and help them remove it by helping them reconstruct their memories and remember things they'd long since forgotten thanks to the disease. And now we're going to go into... I can't remember what this room is called. We'll get told in a second. It's a place inside your mind where you can dance between memories and store things and keep notes and whatnot. It's almost like your TARDIS, let's say. Oh, yeah, there we go. We're in it. Oh, it's loading in. Okay, listen up. You are the in case. case. That's it. You're probably going to come back here a lot, so please take some time to get acquainted with your surroundings. It keeps most restorers' sanity intact. For a short while, anyway. And there's this almost Half-Life-esque undertones that you're just one of many, as I was saying. But also there might be some kind of darker purpose to what Phyllis is doing. I don't want to go into too much, but there is there is that hint that there's just something not quite right about what the people are doing to these patients that are suffering. Ah uh, yes, we can travel to and from the case whenever we want, but now we are inside Phyllis... Eh, not Phyllis, he's... Jean's memories of a long since time past. I believe it's the sixties. Maybe a bit Our later than that. Our purpose this evening is to track the memory and pinpoint its location so we can cleanse it of any disease present. Everything you're seeing in front of you is a visual environment. This is made in the Unreal Engine, by the way. Mind. Barren wastelands or an abstract painting reimagined. It's all completely tangible. All I can see are brain scans of tissue degradation confirming my previous diagnosis of dementia. Both are incredibly important if we are to succeed and understand our client's needs. Now, if you just give me a second, I'll have some more details for you. Feel free to explain.
explore in the meantime. Shall do, Phyllis. Thank you. And I shall also talk. So I am going to show you the solutions to the tutorial area, we'll call it. So if you don't want to see any of that, I'm going to kind of Reading get my... Oh, but Phyllis would stop talking for a second. ...is located below you in an old abandoned mine known as Devlin. I'll get my housekeeping out of the way now if you do want to go because you've already liked what you've seen although I would say if you're on the fence definitely stick around because I think by the end of this you might be convinced but anyway I'm recording this on the day either one is actually out March 25th I'm going to be putting this up a day late or a day or two late unfortunately because of my schedule apologies for that it's going to be available on Steam and the GOG site and Humble basically everywhere there is a Mac version coming but it's going to only be PC at launch and if you get it in its first week of sale, and as I say, this video will be up in its first week, just not on the actual day, you get a 15% off. It's $20 for the standard edition, 30 for the deluxe. And as it was saying, Oculus Rift support. And I think this is about as perfect a game for Oculus Rift as you could possibly get. It just it fits the theme of just wandering around, exploring a wonderful world. It, I mean, I was going to say it feels lived in, but it technically doesn't. That's almost like me accidentally stumbling on a negative in that you never see anybody because you're just dealing with memories and you hear a sound and whatnot. Uh, what do I need in here? There is an item I'm looking for in particular. I don't need a kettle but you can pick it up and look at it if you want. And you can only carry one item at a time so if you do need to watch well, I can use this as an example. I don't need this kettle but let's say I did. I can go back to the case and store it for later in case I do need it. And then just go back again. Like that. Now, I am looking for a decorative plate from memory, and we can also find notes to read. I'm not going to stop and read them all. The undertones of this particular memory of genes is that there was a very memorable, rather horrific accident in the minds of some undisclosed description at this point, anyway. And... Oh, what do we have here? Yes, this. And that's kind of like the focal point of this. Now, I totally cannot find the, the damn thing I'm looking for. What does this say? Oh, I can't actually click on them, because you can just read them normally. What about this? Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, it's up here, it's up here. This is where I want. Get a nice view of the bay from there, although I'm not going to dwell on that. We can play the guitar if we want. That's what we want. Not sure what that's for. But it's this is what we want. That if you feel an item might be 1670. Your journey, and you have no use for it now, you can always store it in the case and collect it at any time. Should you want to. I don't want to, so stop telling me. Right, so we want this to be 1670. Okay. There we go. So, I've been digging a little deeper into our client's personal history, and I found details of a strong emotional response to someone who once worked within the mine. An entry that discusses the mine at great length, but doesn't discuss whom the individual was that worked there. Continue to work your way down, further into the mine. It seems the centre of this memory is very much at the heart of these industrial ratways. I'll contact you if I gain any more information. Right, while she was talking, I was solving that puzzle and I wasn't going to try and draw attention to it so that hopefully you didn't quite twig how I worked that out, although it is obviously to do with that picture, but I won't go into details. And if you want to read what that is, you can pause the video. Because I am going to move on. So this basically is how Ether One plays. You get these areas that you explore. However, as I was saying, the main, the way, the main way the game plays is simply just walking around and enjoying helping find these problems and remove them. The puzzles themselves that we're going to actually come to the first one now, other than this one, because this is the tutorial about what they are, are entirely optional. You do not need to do them. So if you want to just wander around and enjoy the story, you can. If you want to be challenged, that's what the puzzles are there for. And you, as I was saying, you are rewarded by additional story, additional memories, and possibly, I don't know, because I haven't played enough yet, possibly help Jean all the more later on. Who knows? So the puzzle we're looking for is in the form of a broken projector, which is right here. A projector? I'm not sure how they got here, but I think they relate to our patient's history. Don't worry, you won't need these to progress this evening as they're an optional task. But we should at least give this one a try. Yes, yeah, so that's our saying. From this point on, you don't need to worry about them, but we're telling you how to do this one so that you have that choice further down the line. And I do know how we're going to get out of this area, but we'll spend a little time walking around. And we'll open this. What do we have here? We it actually require this. Our life can stay with us in the back of our minds. 
Now, usually if we hear from Jean rather than Phyllis, that's her her being prompted by something we've done to trigger one of our memories. And that usually means we're doing something right. I'll store important notes like this downstairs in the case for you. They'll be there whenever you want to have a look at them. Press G to, tick, T to check your notes in the case. Fair enough, I am. they're stored downstairs, yes. So if you did want to see any of your important notes, they are... they're not here, they're through here. Yep, this big room back here. So that's where they're kept, if indeed you need to check them. I'm not entirely sure what the point of this room is. Rather strange. Another guitar. And we'll go back again. So there is a story to be told here in the mine itself. There's a lot of miners complaining about the fact that they have to keep on cutting pipes to get the oxygen supply and they're worried about things. And then there's weird ones like this one. And there's a canary cage up there. Does everybody know why they have canaries? It's so that they could tell if there was a gas leak because the canaries died from it first being smaller. Something ain't right. Somebody just knew something was going to go wrong and sure enough something did. Voice acting, by the way, amazingly good. Really, really happy with it. Haven't found a single voice yet that I thought was out of place. Phyllis does a very good job, and she's definitely the voice you hear the most of, although you do obviously hear Jean talking a lot. And once again, I'm not trying to dwell on what I'm doing too much, because I am solving puzzles here, and as always, whenever I cover a puzzle game for these Let's Look at, I try not to ruin too much for you. But I do also want to get through the tutorial to show you what the proper game, as it were, looks like and how it gives you choices about how you want to play. Because I think that's a very important aspect that I'm very impressed with. Uh, let me just double check here. Okay, we want to come over here. Sure enough. Yeah, let's just remind myself what is down here other than flooded caves. Oh, I don't actually remember coming in this room here. So this is a note I've never read before. It's a poem. Which gave pretty strong hints as to what happened here. Let me just check down here as well. I don't remember going this way either. It doesn't look like there's anything down there, so I won't bother. A spray of perfume and it all comes flooding back. Okay, we require this book, and we're just going to backtrack a little bit now. Back through the mines. Uh, this way, yep, yep, this is the one. And I believe that's the criteria finished to finish this puzzle, the optional memory, which was to find the book I now hold, and bring it back to the office here. Well, it's not much of an office, but you know what I mean. You see that? The projector's almost finished. Okay, so mostly you get these backstories. What it looks like to you, but our readings have trebled in the last few seconds. You must be incredibly close to the centre of this memory. I think. Right, so as we approach the end of the tutorial era, I'm going to be quiet for a little bit, although I will come back and explain once we're back in the open. But just remember, once again, this is Oculus Rift support and. This is kind of the build up to the end of the tutorial that I really enjoy, so I don't want to really talk during it because I really like this part. And I want you to enjoy it as well. So stay tuned. There. There it is. Uh, our readings, they're showing that this, this is what's causing the symptoms of dementia in our patient. Or at least it's, it's part of what's causing it. Destroy it any way you can. Once the task is done, I'll be able to extract you from the memory and place you in another. Destroy it! 
stars are passing me by, burning so bright and so fast as if they never truly existed at all. They're so beautiful, so fragile. I want to hold on to them. I want to hold on and never let them go. Why can't I hold on anymore? Please. And I'm back. Hope you enjoyed that. And now we're into the game proper where we are given the choice to do optional puzzles or simply to do a little walking around. Can you hear me? Ah, oh, there you are. I'm sorry. What you've just experienced was a relapse of our patient's condition. I'm trying to fast forward her talking because I just want to get into it. So playing. Yes, we are in the right now, place. Good. The objective as stated is to locate Jean's artifact. At this present moment in time, we don't know what this item is. We need to gather information from important memories our client can still understand. Their core memories. Yes, I already have. I'm in Pinwheel Harbor now. See? Right. Told you. Let's try to make sense of all of this. Explore whatever you can, and I'll keep in contact with any new information. Right, so the, the objective in this area is to find these. No puzzles involved, they're just scattered around this environment. We just click on them and they go. You found one. A memory fragment. Good work. A ribbon. This must be Jean's representation of them within her mind. And as we can see, once you get all the ribbons in an area, you open up a core memory to explore. I'm going to store them here for you from now on. So that's the gates that block right. progress. Let's Not a puzzle, just a collectible type thing. It lets you run around the areas just exploring them at your leisure, having fun. But then, there are also, if I can find the blacksmith place, I think this is it here. There's also numerous projectors scattered around the place. The mind can be like a blank canvas, or a picture can be left incomplete for a generation. I need to be finished years later in life. Can't remember actually where the projector in this house is, but there is one. Vital part of the British town for a very long time, but with industries growing and taking over, they had to find other ways to survive and remain in hmm. trade. This particular smith became well known for his sculpting and other decorative metal work, but apparently he became a recluse after the industrial decline and destroyed all of his work. Well, I thought there was a, a projector in there. There's another collectible that we need. Each one of them you pick up gives you a bit more of Phyllis talking to you about what's going on and the memories and whatnot. Ah, yes, this one definitely has a projector in it. A small wedding. But moving country means making a new life and new friends. Sure enough. Every town has its own May Day celebration. But many people travelled from around the British Isles for the annual Pinwheel, Maypole, Morris dancing competition. Such a beautiful English tradition, and a rare thing these days. So there is a puzzle to solve in this house, to get a little bit of backstory when you finish that projector. I did that off camera. Had fun doing it. Felt satisfied when I did as well. But the choice is yours as to whether or not you do them. Or don't know where to go. Remember you can go back to the case and check the map. Indeed you can, Phyllis. So as I kind of wrap up here, this was Ether 1 by White Paper Games. As I said, it's out by the time you see this, and if you catch it in its opening week, 
you can get it for 15% off of a $20 normal retail price, which is a more than acceptable asking price for this type of game, in my opinion. Granted, it won't be to everybody's taste, because not everybody is into explorative, explorative rather, games like this where puzzles are optional and story is very much in the forefront. It's also maybe a bit of a delicate subject for some people, so I don't know about that. It's up to you to decide. But there will be relevant links in the description box below. This is probably one that I'll spend at least a little bit more time with in my off-camera, you know, spare time. I am enjoying it. I am interested where the story goes. I'm, I'm curious whether it's going to take a dark turn or not, or if it'll have a happy ending. And it's always good when a game actually makes you care enough to want to see wh where it's leading. And that's going to be my final thought on Ether 1. My name has been Flick. Thank you for watching, and ta-ta for now.